India went under lockdown on 24 March 2020 and in coming weeks many businesses, sectors, and industries got impacted. Education was one of them. Education has been hit particularly hard by the pandemic with 1.53 billion learners out of school and 184 country-wide school closures, impacting 87.6% of the total enrolled learners. Leaving no option but to move to virtual phase. But the question was, how? Let's hear some insights from international education experts Dr. Indu Shahani, founding dean of the Indian School of Management and Entrepreneurship and a former sheriff of Mumbai. She is also winner of many awards. Mr. Nidish Jain is an industrialist, philanthropist, and an educationist. His most notable achievement was the founding of S.P. Jain School of Global Management. He has also represented India in the G20 summit as a delegate selected by PM Modi. Needless to say receivers of many awards and honors. The talk was focused on how education sector responded to COVID, how was it received, what are institutes doing to manage the sudden change, what will be the cost impact due to the shift, what are the skills required in future student, and lastly, how does education look like in next 5 to 10 years. Currently, 19th century curriculum is taught by 20th century faculty to the 21st century students. The crisis is perceived as an opportunity in disguise for online education. Institutes used online only to support the formal education. Now going digital is the only choice. Institutes went into war footing training in online teaching. Most surprisingly, students came forward to help and adapted to it. The uncertainty was addressed by flexibility through borderless courses. Options like completing one semester online and next semesters in campuses are offered. Initial resistance was understandable since not everyone is used to it. It is like first time for anything. And since online is economical, it carries a stigma it will be ineffective. Let's see what steps are taken to check the effectiveness. Few of the many steps were parents' teacher town hall, where live demonstrations and recordings of the class were sent to parents. Audit is done for every class due to the recording. Knowledge check is real-time updated and accessible. Early results suggested that since all students are online, there are no backbenchers. Due to advanced technologies, distractions are minimum and students are highly engaged. As it is learned from home, there is no late comings or absentism. We, unlike Nitish, use the open source software because it's very easy uh, for us to get you know all, all these that we've been using zoom has been one of our favorites but then you know using a uh, google classrooms and we have our own lms system also so that has that was always there but now it's more used because it's virtual that's one thing secondly um you know this teachers created what is called learn from home kits and these kits were actually designed for a, for a fashion person, I've, I've seen, I've actually got into the classes and seen, there are things that are lying around in the house, they are there already. So you just create those, tell them, this is going to be your studio. So working, making, creating studios from home. And for the faculty, how did we do that? Their kits got transported and delivered to them because they were available and they were around. So they had a studio at home. And of course, you know, the kind of softwares that, that the design school has been using, Arduino, um, Milo, Ford, you, it's amazing while they're speaking, they're sketching, they're showing it, and they're also, also the students are continuing to do that. So I Further efforts went in sending reading materials. Thanks to e-commerce, it is easy. Strengthening the digital library with resources that can help students and easing the project submission through different online mode. 
launched No Border Education which means tied up with three European universities and shared each other's classroom. Secondly, onboarded guest speakers from US, Singapore easily, which never really happened earlier. Third, increase of collaborated social events with the use of advanced technology. One of the interesting things that happens on campus is the formation of clubs. So you have clubs, uh, it can be a marketing club, it can be a club to do anything. But online you can have even better clubs because in our case now, again coming back, it's not only people, it's not only students who are physically there on the campus. You can make an AI club with fellow universities from all over the world. And today, other universities are open to doing this sort of stuff. It, it took us two weeks to make these uh, university tie-ups for this borderless campus I spoke about, because our need is their need too. So if we want to collaborate with them, they want to collaborate with us. So if you have an online AI fraternity, and today using Zoom and various other technologies, you, you, you practically feel that you're there. So there are many ways in which you could address this. It would not be exactly in the same way. Most of the Institute's cost goes in industry experienced expensive faculties. It also costs a lot to create an updated curriculum every year. A student is paying for the value of a highly professional degree and not for mode. Regulators and universities are considering a hybrid model of studying, which will not affect the cost. The cost will reconsider only if we move to 100% online mode of studying. Hence, to conclude the cost will be reduced only if is scalable. Secondly, if students find it appealing and industries accept it as an equivalent degree from a well-reputed university. 87% of the top 150 CEOs interviewed by Dr. Indu Shahani agreed that there are five essential skills for future students. As people need to take data-driven decision, analytical skills is the foundation. The second is creativity that involves original initiatives. The third is adaptability to technology and coding world. The fourth is how empathetic you are with people around you. The last one is whether one values lifelong learning. Innovation is driving all the industries and hence in the next five years, one should look at how to replicate classrooms at home. Secondly, how to collaborate with other universities and share a classroom. And lastly, change the design of the course to make it practical. Regulators are exploring to offer online degrees from reputed universities. Had it not been for pandemic, this would not have happened. The faculties would be outliers, and they will have to think outside the box. And, if the students takes the responsibility of the learning, that's when the change would come. In the concluding remarks, universities will embed a hybrid learning model. This will be driven by disruptive technological innovation, followed by global experience with international speakers. And lastly, students will be able to learn anything, anywhere, and anytime. We would like to thank our eminent speakers Dr. Indu Shahani and Mr. Nitish Jain for their wonderful insights. We are sure all of us will be much more optimistic and looking forward to the brighter way of learning. Thank you all.